What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Curry, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. It's one of my favorite times of the year. It's June, which means that it's Pride Month, and all around the country, various members of the LGBTQIA plus community are marching, having walks, having lots of events, parties, and of course, the brands are taking advantage of that by coming out with some amazing footwear and apparel collections. Today's sneaker that we're talking about is one of my favorite out of the entire collection from Nike's Be True collection. Without further ado, let's take a look. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Air Max 90 Be True. Now, before we get into the shoe, let me actually start with the box, tell you guys a little bit of history about the designer, not just of the shoe, but of the flag and the colors that inspired this sneaker and why this year makes it so special. Starting with the box, as you guys can see, you have the rainbow flag right on top of the box here. Now, all around the box, it's all colored with the various colors from the rainbow flag. But the cool thing about this is that it's actually the color of the original rainbow flag. Now, the rainbow flag that we all know today to be the international symbol for LGBT communities actually is six colors, whereas this box, Nike actually paid homage to the designer Gilbert Baker, whose signature is down in the lower right-hand corner, and his original design with all eight colors of his original flag in the box. But who exactly was Gilbert Baker and what did he do? Gilbert Baker was actually one of the pioneers of the gay pride movement back in the 60s and 70s. Now, there was a monumental event that a lot of people say sparked the gay pride movement back in the late 60s called the Stonewall Riots. Some people call it the Stonewall Uprising. We will get into that history after we take a look at the sneaker. However, as a result of the Stonewall Riots and the various marches and the rise of the gay pride movement that happened in the early 70s, that inspired Gilbert Baker to go ahead and design what we all know now as the pride flag. Now, as you guys can see, you have the standard Air Max 90 silhouette. However, it looks very, very colorful lots of different elements in it. So starting with the upper of the sneaker here, let's start here in the middle of the upper of the sneaker here. All black leather going from down by the toe box all the way back to the heel wrapping around the sneaker, this nice black grain leather. Now inside of that black grain leather, we have this red Air Max symbol here. Now in the midsole of the sneaker, you get this really nice splash of yellow here right around the airbags. Moving up to the quarter panels of the shoe on the lateral and medial side, what really caught my eye about the shoe and yours, the stitched swooshes. Now to me, this was really incredible because if you notice, there's eight individual swooshes, all different colors, all stitched into the shoe. Now complementing those colors of the swooshes, you'll notice the orange and purple on the lateral side of the shoe on the eyelets and the pink and green on the medial side of the shoe on the eyelets. Now on the heel of the sneaker here, you see this blue with the black Nike Air symbol that Nike of course is blocked out, similar to the Nike Sports Square collection that we've seen. On the toe of the outsole, you get this really nice turquoise color that of course matches the turquoise on one of the swooshes. And that's all wrapped in a really nice gray leather with that really nice mesh netting in the toe box and the quarter panels of the shoe as well. I love the stitching of the swooshes on these. It just tells me that Nike really took their time to make sure that this sneaker was really, really special for this collection. Now, moving to the insole of the shoe. Pink insole on the left shoe here that says Be True on the bottom with Gilbert Baker's signature right above it. But the right insole is possibly my favorite because it actually explains what each of the colors on the rainbow flag mean. Sexuality, life, healing, sunlight, nature, magic, serenity, and spirit all very essential things to leading a happy and healthy life. Now, as I mentioned before, the original flag had all eight colors on here. And for the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, Nike actually paid homage to Gilbert Baker, who unfortunately is now passed on, by including all of the original eight colors instead of just the traditional six colors that you see on the rainbow flag today. Now, I was doing a little bit of research about the flag itself, and apparently the hot pink color was the first to be removed from the flag because it was too expensive expensive to produce when Gilbert Baker started to mass produce the flag. Apparently the turquoise color for magic was the second to be removed because there was a parade or a pride parade. I don't know. You guys can probably correct me on that one, but they wanted an even amount of colors to be on there so that they could split the flag into two and they can display it prominently. Now the Stonewall Riots, what exactly was it? There are countless documentaries all over the internet, all over YouTube that you can sit and watch for hours that really delve deeply into what the Stonewall Riots were 
were, but I'll just give you the quick 30 second synopsis. Back in the 50s and 60s, homosexuality was actually considered illegal in 49 out of the 50 states in America, everywhere except for Illinois of all places. So in New York, there were a lot of different gay bars that people would go to kind of as a safe haven or a refuge. Now, some of these places were a little seedier than places, but the police always had surveillance on all of these bars around town. Now, during those days, police would actually raid these bars quite often. Sometimes they would take bribes. Other times they would do ridiculous things like citing and arresting people for not wearing gender appropriate clothing. But there was one particular night at a place called the Stonewall Inn where the police often raided, except on this night in 1969, the patrons had had enough of the police coming and harassing them. And they did something about it. They ended up rising up, throwing various objects, not only at the police officers, but locking the police officers inside of the building and attempting to set the place on fire. Apparently they felt like enough was enough and they were sick and tired of getting harassed and getting this kind of treatment from the police officers. It was a powerful moment and a huge milestone in the gay pride movement. And from that night, it really sparked and served as a catalyst for the gay pride movement as we know it today. Now it's crazy because you really don't hear that much about gay pride back in the 60s and 70s as much as you do about things like racial oppression and things of that nature. You know, we oftentimes talk about the civil rights movement, which was incredibly important in and of itself, but we don't really talk about the LGBT and the gay pride movement as much as we should that was happening at the same time. Remember the 60s and the 70s were a time of rebellion, the Vietnam War, a lot of people were protesting, and the LGBT community was just as much a part of that as anybody else. So kudos to Gilbert Baker and kudos to everybody that was there at the Stonewall riots that very fateful night that started and spearheaded what we know as the gay pride movement today. I myself have a lot of homosexual and transsexual friends and family, so they always get my full support. But that leads me to the interesting question about these collections. Why do they only come out in June? And are companies really trying to profit off of the gay pride movement? So the question remains, when Pride Month comes around in June, has it become more of a cash cow for different brands or is it still a statement in solidarity? Now, of course, we all know that Nike wholeheartedly endorses various athletes who are members of the LGBT community. Not only that, but between Converse and Nike, they've given over $4 million to various initiatives that have to do with the LGBT community as well. However, I guess the thing that kind of gets to me sometimes is that you don't really see Pride highlighted that much the other 11 months of the year like it is in June. Now, I understand that June is specially set aside for Pride Month, like February is specially set aside for Black History Month, but all the time on Twitter, all I keep seeing people say is, every day is Black History Month. Every month is Black History Month. And if we're gonna have that energy, we have to keep that same energy when it comes to our brothers and sisters who are a part of this community as well. Theoretically, every month should be Pride Month. Every month should be a month that we celebrate and highlight things that people who are in this powerful community are doing. Am I right? I always wonder why companies don't give a larger percentage to LGBT communities, especially during June. Now, again, not knocking Nike or any other brand that releases apparel and footwear that has to do with this amazing month, because again, $4 million, that's a lot of money. But don't be fooled, Nike's still getting their bread too. And they understand that when June rolls around, there's a lot of profits to be had. I guess it comes down to the individual taste because at the end of the day, everybody's kind of here to capitalize off of anything if there's a lot of energy around it. I mean, to say that Nike was wrong for cashing in on Pride Month is to say that Hallmark is wrong for being a company at all because all they do is cash in on different holidays every month. So do I think that Nike necessarily is wrong for making this? No, as long as they keep promoting the community and they keep promoting the athletes that are also a part of this community, I guess I don't have a problem with it. But I won't lie, it would be nice to see a little bit more support the other 11 months of the year. That's just one man's opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off down below. And that's pretty much it when it comes to these shoes. Now it's time for you guys to sound off. Let me know what you guys think about the Air Max 90B Trues. Did you add this to your collection? Are you a member of the LGBT community or not? And if you are, tell me what you think about Pride Month. Do you feel like enough emphasis and support is placed on this month? Or do you feel that you are getting the proper support that you need all year long? Sound off down below. Let me know. While you're down here in the comments, you can go ahead and click on that subscribe button. We would love to welcome you into the Sneaker Fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you, I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Air Max 90 from the 2019 Be True collection. And until next time, I'm out.